I was wandering through my dollar store the other day and I found a whole bin full of these. Which initially just looked like a reflector or something, but when I looked closer, I noticed it's full of LEDs. It's got a bunch of little 50-50 LEDs in there. Uh, one between behind each, so there's like 10, uh, 10 LEDs in there. And looking at an angle, I can see there's some other components going on in there. So it's not just a simple little thing. And then I look at the back, and it's got under the sticker, it's got a uh, some contacts filled with some kind of grease or goo or something. And it's labeled ground, tail, and stop and turn. That is a tail light for a trailer. Now what is that doing in quantity at a dollar store? Obviously I have to play with it. So, um, these gooey little things in here. Yeah, that's some kind of uh, weatherproofing grease. So I'll just turn on my power supply and stuff these down into there. So that's in the ground. Oh, wow. That's fairly bright. That's in the stop and turn position. And that's in the, ta the taillight position. Back to stop and turn. And taillight position. Okay. So whatever the circuitry is in there, all it's really doing is just dimming it in the one position. That's kind of neat. Okay, since this is a trailer light, it's probably going to be a bit of a bear to get into. It's likely welded. Oh, can I get in with my spudger just? That's going to be glued or something. I'm going to have to use some kind of abusive technology to get into it, I think. Something a little bit more severe than just simply a spudger. Hmm. I wonder if I can cut through the seal. I'm just going to get violent off camera here, I think, and I'll come back when I've got it off. Oh, oh, I think I'm getting there. Ah! Wow, that took some abuse. That was pretty solidly in there. Oh, okay. So there's a slot there. And this is dropped into it and it's glued from both sides. That's why I have to get so violent with it. Okay, let's see if it still works after that. Ground and... That's a surprise. I wasn't expecting red LEDs. I was just expecting white LEDs and a red lens. Huh. But it still works. Okay. Uh, how is that attached? Let's bring that down there and zoom in on it instead. Is it in focus? There we go. So what do we got here? We got a nice little silk screen. Let's turn it this way so you can actually read it. Nice little silk screen. F U C I D I T Y is the brand. Um, there's all the LEDs. A 240 ohm resistor, another 240 ohm resistor, 110 ohm resistor, another 110 ohm resistor, a couple 122 ohm resistors, a zero ohm resistor, aka a jumper wire, and three diodes. I'm guessing. Hmm. So it is, uh, says there, 12 volt version 2.0. There's a couple of test pads there. Are those test pads power? Ooh. Not like greasy goo all my wires here. Yuck. No, they're not. They're for something else. Okay. 
So, these two here aren't test pads, but these three soldered ones are the actual connections coming up from below. There's the low brightness and there's the high brightness. Those are nice and bright, actually. Wow. Okay. Um, well, that's... Uh, let's see if I can trace this circuit out. Just uh, one reverse engineering later. So here is the schematic all roughly drawn up because it is. That's just how I do it. So here's what we've got. What should I point with? How about a probe? So there's there's three strings of LEDs, two strings of three LEDs, and two strings of two LEDs, and each one is a little bit separate. So we start from the common wire, which is that one there. I've just tacked uh, some wires on for my troubleshooting. Um, it goes through JM1, which is this zero ohm resistor, and it goes to the common cathode side of all of the strings of LEDs. Now I've written down just the, uh, the numbers that are written on the circuit board. Uh, just for convenience. So, uh, the two strings of three go in series through a 240 ohm resistor and then down join up uh, through a polarity uh, protection diode and out to the uh, pin, the stop turn pin, which is the bright one, that one. Um, and the strings of two, uh, two series and then a 110 ohm resistor and then a diode uh, through a diode again for reverse polarity protection and to the same point stop and turn. So for some reason the strings of three have a higher resistance in series than the strings of two. Which when I measured it, when I measured across any of these uh, LEDs in the strings of three when it's on full brightness, um, get 1.9 volts across each diode. Um, and these ones in the strings of two, get 2.1 volts. So it's not that much difference, but there is a bit different current flowing through them, obviously, if they're dropping different voltages. Um, so that's in the, uh, that's how this stop turn, the brighter one is set up. The dimmer one, the tail light, which is the one that's lit up right now so it doesn't knock our eyes out, it again comes in through a reverse protection diode then it goes through this it looks like a voltage divider but it kind of isn't because it's going to the uh to the anode sides of the diode strings it's just putting a different series resistance in front of the existing strings so for the strings of three you got the diode drop 1800 ohms then in series 240 ohms, and then three uh, LEDs. And the same thing happens up there. For the um, strings of two, there's a 1200 ohm resistor in series with it, and then there are pre-existing 110 ohms, and then out there. I'm not sure why they've chosen those values. I'm not sure why they're driving the different strings differently. They could have selected these resistors to drive these all at the same currents but they're not i don't know uh i mean visually it doesn't make a huge amount of difference um they all look close enough to the same brightness at the lower brightness setting even with the cover on and they all look close enough to the same brightness with uh, with it on high beam, or whatever you want to call it, uh, brake light mode. So that's interesting. Interesting design decisions on their part. So just using this method, I'm just going to short out an LED in one of the strings of three here, and 3.8 milliamps, and then strings of two, seven milliamps, in the dimmer mode. In the brighter mode. String of three, 
is 28 milliamps and the string of two is 76 milliamps which makes yeah makes sense because the different sizes of the resistors now why they did that i don't know and why they don't look too much brighter the why you know those ones don't look brighter than these ones i don't know yeah they even feel warmer don't get it and obviously it was the design choice that they made and it really doesn't matter too much because the brightness isn't that much different oh well it was interesting looking at it and just about the most interesting thing i think anyway is that i found this at a dollar tree a dollar store for a buck and a quarter why i cool i guess the other thing to uh, to note is there's no real way of mounting this thing it just plugs into whatever plug that is but there's no i guess there's these two cleats on the side you could clip it down or something but i don't know strange thing to find at the dollar store oh well that was a fun thing to do in uh in a little evening here i uh thanks for watching as usual if you have anything to say about this, uh, jump down into the comments. That'd be groovy. Other than that, I will talk to you later.